ओम नमो भागवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भागवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भागवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जाय मुदीर ये We welcome everyone who's joined us online this morning. Please give them a welcome. Hare Krishna. Text to this following number. We'd like to hear from you. 650-429-8043. You can join us on... WhatsApp, and that number is 650-336-7993, 650-336-7993. If you don't have WhatsApp, you can download it off the internet. <laughs> okay, again, text to 650-429-8043, or uh, can communicate through WhatsApp, at 650-336-7993. How is everyone today? Great. Yeah, you're great, that's for sure. I'm reading from The first canto, seventh chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam. This is called The Son of Drona Punished. First verse, Shaunaka Uvacha, Nyugate Narade Suta, Pogavan Badrayanaha, Shutavams Tad Abhipretam, Tatakim Akarod Vivuhu. Rishi. Shaunaka asks, O Sutta, the great and transcendentally powerful Vyasadeva heard everything from Sri Narada Muni. So after Narada's departure, what did Vyasadeva do? Purport in this chapter, the clue for describing Srimad Bhagavatam is picked up as Maharaj Prikshit is miraculously saved in the womb of his mother. This was called, caused by Droni Ashwatthama, Acharya Drona's son, who killed the five sons of Draupadi while they were asleep, for which he was punished by Arjuna. Before commencing the great epic Srimad Bhagavatam, Sri Vyasadeva realized the whole truth by trance in devotion. Sutta Uvacha Brahma Nadyam Saraswatyam Ashrama Paschimetate Shamyaprasa Iti Prokta Rishinam Satra Vardhanaha. Sri Sutta said on the western bank of the river Saraswati, which is intimately related with the Vedas, there is a cottage for meditation at Shamyaprasa, which enlivens the transcendental activities of the sages. Purport for spiritual advancement of knowledge, a suitable place and atmosphere are definitely required. The place on the western bank of the Saraswati is especially suitable for this purpose. 
And there is the ashram of Vyasadeva at Shamya Pras. Srila Vyasadeva was a householder, yet his residential place is called an ashrama. An ashrama is a place where spiritual culture is always foremost. It does not matter whether the place belongs to a householder or a mendicant. The whole Varnashram system is so designed that each and every status of life is called an ashram. This means that the spiritual culture is the common factor for all. That spiritual culture is the common factor for all. What's the common factor for all? The brahmacharis, the grahastas, the vanaprasas, and the sannyasis all belong to the same mission of life, namely realization of the Supreme. Therefore, none of them are less important as far as spiritual culture is concerned. The difference is a matter of formality on the strength of renunciation. The sannyasis are held in high estimation on the strength of practical renunciation. Text number three, please repeat. Tasmin swa shame vyaso. Badri shandamandite. Asino pa upashrit prishya. Pranida dyao manak swayam. In that place, Srila Vyasadeva, in his own ashrama, which was surrounded by berry trees, surrounded by what? Berry trees. Sat down to meditate after touching water for purification. We need some berry trees around here. <laughs> Purport. Under instructions of his spiritual master, Srila Narada Muni, Vyasadeva concentrated his mind in that transcendental place of meditation. This is... Uh, the key to life, one has to be able to concentrate the mind on the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Manmana bhavamad bhakto madhyaji mam namaskuru. That you have to think of me. And one has to remove the distractions from one's life so that one can think of the Lord. So there are certain places that are conducive for this. The ashrama, of Srila Vyasadeva Shamya Prasa, which is a cottage surrounded by berry trees. You can imagine it's very conducive for meditation. There's no other distraction there. And one can sit and meditate on the Lord. So um, there is a kind of um, affliction that people in the modern world have, and they don't even realize that they have it, that they're so harassed by distractions throughout the day, constantly, that they're in a, a constant state of anxiety all the time, 24 hours a day, even while they're sleeping. And they try to balance that out by taking intoxication. And they try to uh, balance it out by um, being completely absorbed in games on the internet and things like that. But the anxiety doesn't go in a way, it simply deepens. But here we're finding the real culture is to find a place where you can deeply meditate and think of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Please repeat. Bhakti yogena manasi Samyak pranihite male Apashyat purusham purnam Mayam chattat apashrayam. Thus he fixed his mind, perfectly engaging it by linking it in devotional service, bhakti yoga, without any tinge of materialism. And thus he saw the absolute personality of Godhead along with his external energy, which is under full control. Purport. Perfect vision of the absolute truth is possible only by the linking process of devotional service. This is also confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita. One can perfectly realize the absolute truth, personality of Godhead, only by the process of devotional service. And one can enter in the kingdom, into the kingdom of God by such perfect knowledge. In perfect realization of the absolute, by the partial approach of the impersonal Brahman or localized Paramatma, does not permit anyone to enter into the kingdom of God. 
Sri Narada advised Srila Vyasadeva to become absorbed in transcendental med meditation on the personality of God in his activities. Srila Vyasadeva did not take notice of the effulgence of Brahman because that is not absolute vision. The absolute vision is the personality of Godhead as confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita 719. Vasudeva Sarvamiti. In the Upanishads also, it is confirmed that Vasudeva, the personality of Godhead, is covered by the golden glowing Hiranmayena Patrina veil of impersonal Brahman. And when that curtain is removed by the mercy of the Lord, the real face of the Absolute is seen. The Absolute is mentioned here as the Purusha or person. The Absolute Personality of God it is mentioned in so many Vedic literatures and in the Bhagavad Gita, the Purusha is confirmed as the eternal and original person. The Absolute Personality of God it is the perfect person. The Supreme Person has manifold energies out of which the internal, external, and marginal energies are specifically important. The energy mentioned here is the external energy, as will be clear from the statements of her activities. The internal energy is there along with the absolute person, as the moonlight is there with the moon. The external energy is compared to darkness because it keeps the living entities in the darkness of ignorance. The word apashrayam suggests that this energy of the Lord is under full control. The internal potency or superior energy is also called maya, but it is spiritual maya, or energy exhibited in the absolute realm. When one is under the shelter of this internal potency, the darkness of material ignorance is at once dissipated. And even those who are atmarama, or fixed in trance, take shelter of this maya, or internal energy. Devotional service or bhakti yoga is the function of the internal energy. Thus, there is no place for the inferior energy or material energy, just as there is no place for darkness and the effulgence of spiritual light. Such internal energy is even superior to the spiritual bliss attainable in the conception of impersonal Brahman. It is stated in the Bhagavad Gita that the impersonal Brahman effulgence is also an emanation from the absolute personality of God in Sri Krishna. The Parama Purusha cannot be anyone except Sri Krishna himself, as will be explained in the later shlokas. Yaya Samohito Jiva Atmanam Trigunatmakam Paropi manute nartam, takritam chabi padyate. Due to this external energy, the living entity, although transcendental to the three modes of material nature, thinks of himself as a material product and thus undergoes the reactions of material miseries. Text 6. Anarto pashanam sakshad. Bhakti Yoga Madhoksa Jay Lokasya Janato Vidvamsh Chakra Satvata Sanghitam The material miseries of the living entity, which are superfluous to him, can be directly mitigated by the linking process of devotional service. But the mass of people do not know this, and therefore the learned Vyasadeva compiled this Vedic literature, which is in relation to the supreme truth. Seven. Yasyam by Shuyamanayam Krishna Paramapurushe Bhakti Utpadyate Pungsa Shokamoha Bayapaha Simply by giving oral reception to this Vedic literature the feeling for loving devotional service to Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality of God, it sprouts up at once to extinguish the fire of lamentation, illusion, and fearfulness. Eight. Sa samhitam bhagavatim kritvanukramya chatmajam shukam Adya payam asa, 
Nivriti Niratam Munihi. The great sage Vyasadeva, after compiling the Srimad Bhagavatam and revising it, taught it to his own son, Shukadev, Sri Shukadev Goswami, who was already engaged in self realization. Shaunaka Uvacha. Savai Nivriti Nirataha. Sarvatro Pikshako Munihi. Kasyava Brantim. Uh, uh, brihatim etam Atma Rama Samabhyasat Shri Shonaka asked Sutta Goswami Shri Shukadeva Goswami was already on the path of self-realization and thus he was pleased with his own self so why did he take the trouble to undergo the study of such a vast literature text 10 Sutta Vacha Amarama Shamunayo Nir Granta Apyarukrame Kuravantya Haitukim Paktim Itambhuta Guno Harihi All different varieties of Atmaramas, those who take pleasure in Atma or Spirit Self, especially those established on the path of self realization, though freed from all kinds of material bondage desire to render unalloyed devotional service unto the personality of Godhead. This means that the Lord possesses transcendental qualities and therefore can attract everyone, included liberated souls. O Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Madhatandena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Matsamo Nasti Papa Manaparadi Chakashana Parihare pilaja me kimbruve purushotama Yevatinam yata yuni yunam cha yuvatau yata Mano biramate tadvan mano me ramatantvayi Bumaus kalita paranam bumiri vavalambanam Tvayi jata paranam tome vasharanam brabo Govinda balabe radhe prate tomaham sada Tvariyam itijana tu govindo mam tvaya saha. Radhe vrindavanari she karuna vritta mahani. Kripayani japadabja dasyam mayam pradiyatam. Hantayam adriya balahari dasavaryo yadrama krishna chananash parasha pramodaha. Manam tanoti sahago ganayos tayo yad paniya suyavasakandanakanda mulai. Almost. Close. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Sri Ramachandra is very attractive, especially to the human beings. It's mentioned at the last verse of the first canto, second chapter, that the Lord appears in all the different species of life that he comes in the animal species, the plant species, the vegetable tribes, <laughs> and so forth. Particularly, Lord Krishna and Lord Ramachandra are, are attractive. We see that um, their activities are almost human. Of course, Krishnas are more human than Lord Ramachandra. You can say, oh, that's the Supreme Personality of Godhead especially the way he had adhered to the words of his father. And this is noted in the verses that Karabhajana Muni gives glorifying the Supreme Personality of God in the 11th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. And there he gives a couple of verses that describe three different, three different forms of the Lord. And the acharyas have deciphered which parts of the verses describe the different incarnations of the Lord. So in the verse, Tyakva Sudusyaja Surepsita Raja Lakshmin, Dharmishta Aryavachasa Yaragaranyam, Mayam Ragamta Yitam Anvadavad 
Vande Mahapurusha Te Charanaravindam. Karabhajana Muni describes the three different manifestations of the Supreme Personality of Godhead in one. And this verse actually describes Sadbuj. We see at Sarvabhama Bhattacharya's house, Lord Chaitanya revealed his form as Sadbuj. What is that form? So what does it look like? Yeah, what, hand, what does he have in his hands? Okay, a bow and arrow. You gave away Lord Ram pretty quickly, right? There's, there's a bow and arrow, there's, yeah. a, there's a flute, and um, there's a kamandala, and a sannyasi, the, the danda, and one more. Yeah, he did, she did the three, so flute, a bow and arrow, and then kamandalu, and a danda. Actually, in signing, sign language, the deaf devotee I met, there's, there are signs for sannyas, I think it's something like this. <laughs> So this form of the Lord, Shadbuj, has all three manifestations of the Supreme Personality of God. It is Lord Ram, Lord Krishna, and as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Lord Ramachandra was is described in this verse, Chaktva Sudusyata Sarepshita Raja Lakshmim. That uh, this verse talks about the renunciation of the Supreme Lord. He has this opulence of being supremely renounced. And in the case of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, excuse me, the case of uh, Sri Ramachandra, he, of course, Sita is the supreme goddess of fortune. But in the end, uh, Ramachandra gave her up out of a principle. This is what's so aggravating about <laughs> this past time. It's like everyone was aggravated in Ayodhya. What? You can't leave? It's like, I have to. I'm like, who does that? Only God. And then there is a statement that's very powerful for all of us that on the word of his father, he gave up the kingdom. His father gave his word to Kaikei she made him give his word. And in the story, I'm always struck by how she prepared him before he said it. She said, now promise. And he said, I promise. And now promise again. Promise on the name of... He said, I promise on the name of Ram. He didn't know what he was stepping into. <laughs> and said, now say it again. Now promise again. Now do you really promise? She, she made sure that it was very, very clear because... In this world, it's very rare that someone actually keeps their word. People say things, and it's like, I ah, said that, said that, but it was all lies. So there's a way. <laughs> yeah, I know I said it, but I didn't mean it. Arya Vachasa. So this word, Arya Vachasa, is very powerful in this verse because Ramachandra takes the word and he says, I'm following it. Now, this is very important, the Arya Vachasa. So, Chaktva Sudusyaja Sarepshita Raja Lakshmim. Dharmishta. He was fixed in Dharma. Fixed in Dharma. Dharmishta Arya Vachasa. So, because he was fixed in Dharma, he took the Arya Vachasa, he took the words of the superior as his life and soul. So, this we can benefit from. Now, there are many ways you can live your life. You can try to avoid the miseries of material life by adjusting yourself from one, one place to the next. And many people do this. They change their strategy in life constantly to try to keep up with the material nature. But the devotee of the Lord doesn't change the strategy. This is also holds true in investing. If you're going to invest, you have to have a strategy. And you have to stick to it, even when the market plummets. All the people who don't have a strategy, when the market goes down, they start selling. So they buy high and sell low. This is why most people lose money. And, and if somebody has a strategy, and they say, no, I'm just following the strategy, then they just 
wait it out and, and go through. So life goes up and down, and one must have a strategy to continually uh, worship Krishna, no matter what, to go on following the order of Krishna and the spiritual master, no matter what happens. It's not, it doesn't seem to be good for me right now. You give up the kingdom. That doesn't seem like a good idea to anybody. Nobody thought it was, but dharmishta aryavachasa. It came from the authority, therefore I follow it. That's just the way it is. I'm not changing it. And even after he went into the forest, Sri Ramchandra, and everyone came after him, including Bharat, and said, no, take it back. And there were lots of loopholes. They brought all their attorneys from Ayodhya. All the attorneys came and said, okay, we got, to, we got this figured out. <laughs> we have fine print where you can get out of this. And even Bharat said, you know, take it back, and it's okay now. But Ram aggravated everyone again. And he said, no, my father, this stands for something, this means something. He uttered these words, he, he told, he gave a vow, and I'm going to, and he asked me to follow it, so I have to follow it. And this was, what Prabhupada said was his success in life, that he took Aryavachasa, he took the words of the superior that were coming down, through disciplic succession. From his guru, he got the words. He asked, he said, so what do you want me to do? What can I do to serve you? And his guru told him something that seems very simple and innocuous. But the Aryavachasa, the words of the superior, are not innocuous. They're very powerful. They're the fulcrum of all power in spiritual life. That one takes those and follows them no matter what happens. And even in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, things are going to change. Matra sparshas dukonteya shitoshna sugadukada agama paino nityas tamstitik shashva bharata. That there is going to be ups and downs in this world, so you have to stick to the strategy. And that is to go on doing your devotional service, whether it seems like an opportune time or not. And this is the success in life. And Lord Ramachandra taught this. He is attractive also, as I said, because uh, he, he appears to be very human. And there's a way in which he shows his emotions throughout the Ramayan. Right? There's so many emotions. I mean, practically, one who reads the the beginning section of the Ramayan, it's very hard to continue. Uh, the part that always gets me is when Ram's leaving the Ayodhya and all the citizens come and they say, no, stop. And he's saying, no, keep going, go faster. This tension that, that is there between the citizens whose hearts are being ripped away when Ram is leaving. And Ram uh, loved them like his own self. His devotees, he loves even more than his own self, he says in the, in the Bhagavatam. And so th this separation that's happening because he's following Aryavachasa and he said, I have to go. But they're saying, no, slow down. So they can, they can come closer, they can touch him one more time, they can see his chariot. And he's saying, go faster. This is just drawing the whole thing out. And even when they get to the forest, they meet Guha, who puts them up for the night in the forest and feeds the horses and takes care of them. And then they have, uh, they have to leave early in the morning because all the citizens are coming out to follow them into the forest. And unless they do something tricky, waking up very early and going across the river, losing the tracks, it looks like they go one way, but they went the other way, then they would simply follow them all the way into the forest. So these are heart-rending um, stories about the devotees and, and Sri Ram. And so it's not that, as many people say, the Supreme Lord is uh, impersonal. This has ruined everything, Prabhupada says, this understanding. This has ruined everything. 
Can you uh, put up Bhagavad Gita 337, please? We have emotions eternally, and so does the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And that's Bhagavad Gita 337. One devotee was telling me that after he had become a devotee, he went home to visit his mother, who was very much against his becoming a devotee and arguing against Krishna consciousness. He said, but mom, you don't even believe in God. And she says, I do too. And he said, so who is he? And he says, well, God's a feeling. <laughs> and she was serious. And he said, if God's a feeling, then you're better than God is because you're more than a feeling. And if you ask people anywhere, what is God? Who is God? They'll give you answers like this. God is a feeling. God is. You've been out there. You're talking to people. What do they say? He is light. Light. That's beautiful. That's your truth. I have my truth. <laughs> He's what? Nature. God is nature. Energy. Just energy. These are all um, conveniently vague. Vague ideas of the absolute truth. Even in Christianity, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said, there's such a vagueness about who actually is the Supreme Godhead. Who is it? Yes, Jesus, uh, whom we offer our, our uh, hearts to, but where's the Godhead? Where is that description that gives us a clear idea? And there's also an implication by the impersonalist that when you become perfect, that means you have no more emotions, you have no more thoughts. And this is also very much pervading society these days. If you haven't noticed, when people think about yoga or the path of spiritual self-realization, they think, oh, you shouldn't have any feelings. Giriraj Maharaj tells a story about how this very enthusiastic young man came to see Prabhupada after one of the pandals in Bombay. And when he came in, very effusive, and he was saying, that this Krishna consciousness is spread all over the world, then everyone will live in peace and harmony, and there will be no more anger in the world. And Prabhupada said, what have you got against anger? And so, <laughs> what is this idea you have? What have you got against anger? And the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Kama Esha Kroda Esha Rajo Guna Samud Bhavaha Mahashano Mahapatma Vidyanam Ihavarinam. So someone might rightly answer, well, it's right here in the Bhagavad Gita. The Supreme Personality of God had said, It is lust only, Arjuna, which is born of contact with the material mode of passion, and later transformed into wrath, and which is the all devouring sinful enemy of this world. See? It's bad. Therefore, you should become nothing. Let's read the purport. When a living entity comes in contact with the material creation, his eternal love for Krishna is transformed into lust in association with the mode of passion. It's transformed into lust. See, it's already there. It's not that it's not there. Or in other words, the sense of love of God becomes transformed into lust as milk in contact with sour tamarind is transformed into yogurt. Then again, when lust is unsatisfied, it turns into wrath. Wrath is transformed into illusion, and illusion continues the material existence. Therefore, lust is the greatest enemy of the living entity, and is lust only which induces the pure living entity to remain entangled in the material world. Wrath is the manifestation of the mode of ignorance. These modes exhibit themselves as wrath and other corollaries. If, therefore, the mode of passion, instead of being degraded into the mode of ignorance, is elevated to the mode of goodness by the prescribed method of living and acting, then one can be saved from the degradation of wrath by spiritual attachment. So that's the real answer. 
And the positive form of this emotion, anger, and hankering, all these things come out in the Ramayan. Where's the anger in the Ramayan? Hanuman, Lakshman. Lakshman becomes so angry when Ram says, My, our father has said that I have to leave the kingdom behind and go for 14 years. What a shock anyway, that on the day everyone's getting ready, that all of a sudden everything changes. And we can expect this. You should expect this in your life. Everyone should expect it. When life looks like easy street, there's danger at your door. This is a lyric from an old song. Uh, now, they're ready for crowning Ram, and then the news comes. They see him walk out of the meeting. He goes into a meeting with his mother, with his stepmother, and with his father, and he comes out barefooted, and he won't ride on the royal chariot, and things start to seem amiss. And then when he goes to see his mother, and tells her what the news is, that I'm not going to become the king, I'm, I'm leaving instead. I'm impressed always by how straightforward he is. He just said, this is the way it is. I'm following this. And as soon as his father told him, he just accepted it. He just accepted it. But then Lakshman becomes like fire. He's so angry. He said, let them try to stop us. I'll fight them all down now. <laughs> Father has lost his mind anyway. <laughs> what kind of king is he? To go along with his wife who's simply deranged and, and he's, he's following this ill-advised path and he becomes like fire. And even after Ramachandra tries to appease him, he's still like fire. And so you said also Hanuman, when did he become angry? Right, so he made it to Lanka. And he got captured in Lanka. And when they captured him, uh, Bibishan said, you can't kill him because he's a messenger. But they tied him up. They put rags on his tail. They put oil on it and they lit it on fire. But Agni made that fire feel cool. <laughs> Meanwhile, Hanuman was angry. He had this emotion. He was angry that... Ravan had stolen Sita and they wouldn't give her back and now they're trying to torture the messenger. So he jumped from one place to another and lit the place on fire. That doesn't sound very spiritual. <laughs> but it is. This is the, the positive side of spiritual life. <laughs> means there are emotions, there are activities and they're in relationship with the Supreme Personality of God. The difference, as we see from this verse, is when those same emotions, those same activities become detached from the Supreme Personality of Godhead and are directed in this world for one's own interests, then they become degrading. And they're is the mistake that people make. Because they see that degrading influence, they think, let me make it zero. So the appearance day of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is to show people, no, actually the spiritual world is full of emotion, full of movement, personality. Everything's there. Here's the reflection in the material world. And it's because of our involvement in the material world that we think then that all kinds of feelings are disconnected from spiritual realization. And therefore Krishna says, Vita Raga Bhaya Kroda Manmaya Mamupashrita Bahavo Jnana Tapaso that you have to give up this misconception, this fear of personal existence, and become purified by knowledge about me. So by hearing about Krishna's pastimes, the positive form, how Lord Ramachandra comes, and 
hearing about his emotions, his activities with the devotees and so forth, then one becomes captivated and one's mind becomes interested in hearing about the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And when one also takes the instruction of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one has some guidance in one's life. One has a strategy that one can follow. So this emotion plus service is bhakti. You have to have the emotion and the service has to be there. This is uh, active cultivation on two levels. One level with the body, mind, and senses. The other is an internal level. And that's described by Srila Rupa Goswami at the outset of the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, where he says, Anyabhilashita shunyam jnana karman yanavritam anukulyena krishnanu shilanam bhakti uttama. And the word anushilanam is very specific. It contains the verb shil, which is indicative of both cultivation internally through feelings for the Supreme Personality of God, these emotions that naturally awaken because they're already part of our eternal constitutional makeup and also external cultivation by engaging the senses in the service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And hearing about Krishna is, and Lord Ramachandra, all the different incarnations of the Lord, is the most beneficial process. As we've hear, heard here, Srila Vyasadeva has approached his spiritual master and asked him why he felt despondent, why he feels despondent, and his spiritual master tells him that you have to be more specific. You have to hear more specifically about the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And you have to describe it, because your duty, you're doing your service, but you're not doing it well enough. That's why you're feeling morose. You have to describe the Supreme Personality of Godhead in detail. And therefore, he, Vyasadev, goes into deep meditation, and then he sees for himself the Supreme Lord and his energies. And then he describes it, describes him in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Who else was able to go into a trance and narrate the pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who's specifically relevant today? Huh? Valmiki. And the name of Ram is so powerful. As mentioned in all the Shastras, the name of Ram, everyone say Ram. Ram. Ram, Ram, Ram. Ram, Ram, Ram. <laughs> that one can overcome birth and death by repeating this name. Therefore, we have Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama, Rama Hare Hare. And Valmiki Muni, far from being like Vyasadeva, was a hunter. Vyasadeva is an incarnation of God and supreme, supremely empowered. <clears throat> Valmiki, on the other hand, was a hunter who used to rob people. I hate that when that happens, people rob you. <laughs> I mean, it disturbs a lot of people. Besides, he was violent about it also. He, he said he was a murderer. He, he would... And he was a hunter, and he was in a degraded situation of life. And then he met his spiritual master, who convinced him through his strong preaching that you're becoming implicated by all this, and you're taking back why you're doing it, feed your family. Are they going to stand up for you <laughs> later on when you take all this karma? And he started to come to a census. But again, he needed some practice in order to overcome the, the kind of momentum he had in the material life. There's a kind of muscle memory that we have, isn't it? You may think, I'm going to follow the process very strictly today, and next thing you know, you're half an hour late. Because <laughs> you got distracted in something that was insignificant or useless. I mean, that's a best case scenario. There are worst case scenarios also. And very difficult, even for those who are sincerely engaged in devotional service, 
to go through a lifetime of strictly following. I wrote down three words that really caught my attention in one of, from Bruno and Prabhupada's purports. Nope, they're a little different. He, wrote, he writes, uh, sincerely, regularly, and as far as possible, one should follow. Sincerely, regularly, and as far as possible. And this is another important point that I want to bring up today about sincerely, regularly, and as far as possible. That the principle that Narada Muni used to elevate his disciple, Valmiki Muni, he wasn't a Muni, he was a low class person. How did he elevate him? Somehow or other. Yena, Tena, Prakarina, Krishna, Mana, Niveshayat. It's mentioned by Rupa Goswami that this is the way you must come to Krishna consciousness and bring others to Krishna consciousness. Somehow or other, you have to devise a mean. And the rule is that you have to start with hearing about Krishna. The rules and regulations, don't sit like that, don't do that. People often come to a Krishna consciousness movement and then people walk up to them constantly and start telling them what not to do. That's why in the old days, in the bhakta programs, there was a rule that nobody could talk to them. In fact, they didn't even trust the rule. They would keep the bhaktas so sequestered for the first 60, 90 days, I forget how many there were, that uh, they would come down from their room. I was in 340 West 55th in uh, 55th Avenue in that 12-story building that Prabhupada bought in Manhattan. If we still had it, we'd be billionaires. Um, in any case, everyone had their own floor. And... And one floor was for the, for the new devotees. And the bhakta leaders would bring them down like they were herding sh sheep. And they would be protecting them from the wolves, <laughs> who are all the other devotees. There were about 120 devotees in that, living in that ashram, in that building. And they couldn't talk to anybody. They would just uh, be called away. Because everyone would come up and say, hey, well, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And it, in any case, in the beginning of devotional service, one somehow or other has to fix one's mind on Krishna. So, Narada Muni was so expert that with Valmiki Muni, who said, I've had this muscle memory, I can't chant Hare Krishna, I can't say the name of Ram, because I'm too sinful. Have you ever heard that before? Have you? Has anybody ever told you that? I can't do devotional service, I shouldn't do devotional service, I can't do devotional service, I'm too sinful. Or we've had lots of people say, uh, I won't. Uh, we say, please say Hare Krishna, and they say, I won't say Hare I won't say it, I won't say it. You know what you say? You won't say what? Hare Krishna. Okay. <laughs> this, is, this is Narada Muni's technique. <laughs> what won't you say? Well, I, I'm a killer, you know, I'm a, I'm a murderer, I just, Mara, that's my whole life. I said, okay, just keep saying that. What did you say? Mara? What was that? Mara? Keep, what? What? I can't hear it, a little hard of hearing. Mara, 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 keep going, you know. Somehow keep going was the, the way that Narada Muni taught Valmiki Muni. This shows the power of Ram in his name if one continues. Now listen to Prabhupada's explanation of this verse. This will enliven you to no end. You'll never be the same after you hear this. He quotes the verse, Yena tena prakarina mana krishne niveshayet sarve viti nashedha syur etoyor eva kinkara which he says, if one takes to that line of activities, Krishna consciousness, then all things, all regulation will follow just like a servant follows a master. If the master starts, the servant follows. Similarly, these things, rules and regulations, that will, that will follow automatically. In the next shloka, the Lord says, Sri Pram Dharma, because he has taken to that Krishna consciousness, very soon he will be perfect, pious man. This process will help him. 
Don't be too much anxious. Oh, I am not in such a way. I am not in such a way. Whatever way you may be, you just take to this Krishna consciousness. Very easy thing. If you take this Krishna consciousness, chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, very sincerely and regularly and as far as possible. Very and, and as far as possible. Very sincerely and regularly and as far as possible. By following the rules and regulation of this Krishna consciousness that will help you become a perfect and pious man very soon. Shri Pram. Shri Pram means very soon. Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure where it's from. We'll have to search it out. Sincerely, regularly, and as far as possible. So, he, Valmiki Muni, after having this contact with Narada Muni, was able to go into a similar kind of trance where he was able to personally see the pastimes. Of course, after chanting for a long time. After chanting for a long time. But it's mentioned in the Bhagavatam that Maharaj Chichiketu, because he gave full attention for seven days and seven nights without even drinking water and just chanting, was able to see the Lord Shankarshan within seven days. And so it's, it's not a matter of length of time necessarily, it's a matter of the sincerity of the chanting. But also, at the same time, from whatever situation one's in now, one should continue chanting so one can develop that kind of sincerity. So this Ram Nam, the name of Ram, this we can take with us wherever we go. If we, like Valmiki, go on chanting somehow or other the name of Ram and the names of Krishna constantly, then we'll be able to come to this perfectional stage. And what is the perfectional stage? Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema Sadhya Kabunoi Shravanadi Shuddha Chite Karai Udoi. It's mentioned in the Chaitanya Charamita. This perfectional stage is achieved by purification process, hearing and chanting about Krishna. Shravanadi Shuddha Chite Karai Udoi. And then the natural potential for loving Krishna that's already there uh, when it comes in contact with this, with the devotees. That will reawaken and one will be established again in one's healthy condition of life, which is to have all the emotions, but they're all directed towards Krishna. In the story of, of Lord Ramachandra, there's a particular pastime I'm not sure if it's in the Ramayan, but it is mentioned in the Shastra about how the sages at Danda Karanya, who were worshiping Gopal, happened to be there at, at the time of Ramachandra. And when he came into that forest, they just couldn't stop looking at him because he's so beautiful. This is one of the um, attributes of the Supreme Personality of God it is His beauty. So beautiful you can't stop looking at Him. It's mentioned that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as Nimai Pandit in the city of Navadweep before he went off and cut his hair took sannyas. That was another emotional thing. <laughs> Just cutting his hair off. The, the barber for days he, was, he couldn't even touch the hair and the devotees were crying and crying. When they hear the story still about the Lord cutting his hair, they cry and cry. It's a pastime. There's so much emotion attached to these pastimes. So the beauty of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is one of his great opulences and the sages at Dandyakaranya. They're called the uh, Rishi, Rishicharis. They were there meditating and they saw Ramachandra and then they were desiring the same way that the gopis in Vrindavan had desired to be with Krishna. 
they wanted to be with Ramachandra. There's a mantra that they said, actually. It's a simple mantra. Yeah, does anybody remember? They had, they had asked that let us be as Sita is. This was, this was their thought. That they, they want to be in the same situation as uh, Sita Devi. In any case, because the Supreme Personality of Godhead knows the heart of every living entity, and they have this strong desire that we, uh, we want to be women like Sita Devi and, and be your consort. But Ramachandra, in his appearance, only accepted one wife. So he was silent, but he accepted their desire. And in, in their next lives, these Rishi Charis are famous because they took birth in Gokula, in the families of gopis. And when they came to puberty, then their intense desire, Purvarag, came out for uh, Lord Krishna by the arrangement of Lord Ramachandra. So there's a way in which, by this process of Krishna consciousness, as mentioned, by Rupa Goswami, one comes to the point of such strong emotion directed towards the Supreme Personality of God that it becomes very specific. Let me worship you in this way. It's not to be imitated. This comes as a matter of purification and a natural course. In the same token, there are devotees like Anupam, who was the father of Jiva Goswami, who was convinced intellectually that worshiping Radha and Krishna was the highest kind of worship. Who were they convinced by? <laughs> Rupa and Sanatana Goswami. And yes, I will take your Krishna mantra. And he went and he tried and he couldn't sleep all night. And he came back and he said, I tried, but I've sold my head at the feet of Lord Raghunath. I cannot give him up. And same with Murari Gupta, a great friend of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Growing up, they were so close. He was a, Murari Gupta was a, f a few years older than Mahaprabhu, two years older. And he was a few more classes advanced from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Nimai Pandit used to go around challenging everybody. And Nimai was studying grammar, which was a lower kind of study, and Murari Gupta was already studying rhetoric. So Nimai would challenge him, say, okay, let's have a debate about grammar. And then he would be defeated, and then Murari would start arguing about rhetoric. He said, he, but Ma, he, Nimai would defeat him on that also. But it's described in the Chaitanya Bhagavad how close they were. And then during the Mahaprakash, he called Murari Gupta and revealed that um, Murari Gupta was Hanuman, and he wrote on his forehead, Ramdas. And this kind of uh, firm devotion, he wasn't able to change the kind of emotion that he had for Lord Ramachandra. That was his staibhav. He was fully fixed in that. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu um, was very much appreciative of that. There's another devotee of Lord Ram that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu met. We know when Mahaprabhu went to South India, he was chanting these mantras, Krishna, 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 hey. And within that set of mantras, Rama, Raghava, Rama, Raghava, Rama, Raghava, Rakshamam. He's, this is, when we're singing this mantra, we're really, what it really means is, this is the path of Sharanagati. 
I remember when we were on Sankirtan and we were carrying around that mantra, Anukulyena Sankalpa Pratikulyena Varjana Rakshishititi Vishvaso Guptrite Varanam Tata Karpa Atma Nishepa Karpa Nye Shadvida Sharanagati. This describes the path of surrender and very important in that is that the Lord is my protector and maintainer. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, after he took sannyas, he went to South India, and he was praying like this, Oh, Lord Raghunath, please protect me. You're my protector, nobody else. This is, these are two of the very important tenets of this path of Sharanagati, that the Lord is my maintainer and protector. So he met, as he was traveling, a brahmana named Ramdas Vipra. And Ramdas Vipra was so much absorbed in this kind of devotional service that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appreciated that he invited Mahaprabhu for lunch and Mahaprabhu could say could see after some time he's not cooking <laughs> so he said so are we going to cook is it and and he said Lakshman has not come back from the forest with the roots He's gone off to collect roots in the forest. He's not come back. And Mahaprabhu was, oh, look, this is a Ram Bhakta. He's so absorbed. He's uh, absorbed in that pastime. And then this Ram Das Vipra, he became very emotional by saying, how can we eat anyway? Sita has been stolen by Ravana. We can't. We can't even think of eating now. And Mahaprabhu convinced him from Shastra. He said, it is said in the Shastra that actually Sita was never touched. That as soon as she was apprehended or about to be apprehended by Ravana, then Agni took the real Sita and the Maya Sita was handed over to Ravana. He got a replica, not the real Sita. And then he was... Ram Das Vipra appeased just enough so he could cook lunch. <laughs> but so touching how Mahaprabhu then, when he was traveling, he found in the Kurma Purana. I mean, Shastras weren't on Veda base and not so available. You had to go around and find them in various places. So Mahaprabhu found in another place part of the Kurma Purana that told this exact technicality that he had explained to Ram Das Vipra, and he took the page because he was so eager to show this devotee, to explain to him and show him in the Shastra that actually Sita was not touched. So on his way back, he brought that page from the Kurma Prana and said, see, it's right here. And that became the source of great solace to this devotee. He was so absorbed in the emotion of Lord Ramachandra and all the pastimes of the Lord. This is the effect of hearing about the Supreme Personality of Godhead and associating with his devotees. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema Sadhya Kabunoi Shravanadi Shudhichite Kara Udoi. It reawakens one's original loving sentiment for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And if um, as Prabhupada says here, one sincerely, regularly, and as far as possible, goes on taking the name, especially, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, and hearing the pastimes of the Lord, then, and associating with the devotees, then naturally, this kind of devotional service will awaken within the heart. And now I'd like to hear what your favorite sections of the Ramayana, which, which parts, briefly, had really stuck in your mind or become very meaningful to you. Most of you have heard the whole Ramayana over the last 10 days. Thanks to Gandharvika, I understand, kept the vibration going no matter what. So let's give her a appreciation. So I hear a few of the, your favorite pastimes, things that you heard while reading the Ramayana that stuck with you. And for those of you who are watching online, we welcome you 
And there's one text, that, at least, that's come in. If others want to text in, it's 650-429-8043. Or get on WhatsApp. And you can write to 650-336-7993. That's 650-336-7993 for WhatsApp. That's a permanent number, right? That's a permanent WhatsApp, so if you want to get in on that, you can. Mukharavind, Ram Leela. Both numbers are permanent. You can write those on your wall. <coughs> Thank you, Maharaj, for excellent um, narration of Lord. Is I like today emotions and the emotions that you described is very touchy. And the one part that I always like in the mind is the mantra effect. How the mantra was like um, the kekai was so simple and just by association with mantra it just polluted the heart. So it is very practical lessons that we had to learn from the Ramayana that how mantra can come in our life and change everything. Yeah, I've actually in previous years I've always talked about that because it's, it's so meaningful to me also. We have to be careful. Mahaprabhu made statements about how if you hear from the Sharirak Basha, then even a Uttama Bhagavat will fall down. If you associate with worldly-minded people, you'll become affected by it. And so the mantra effect is very powerful. And in a lecture I heard from Giri Rajmarj, he told, he tells such wonderful stories about Prabhupada, meaningful, well-placed pastimes of Prabhupada. So one, he was saying how Prabhupada had gotten the land in, in Juhu, and now they had to build something there. And you know, where do you get money? We all have this experience, right? It's like you have all these ideas. It's like, where's the money going to come from? There's a lot of projects going on right now everywhere. And everyone's going, give me some money. So there's all these projects. So Prabhupada had this project. He had to, and it was a huge scope to build this Bombay project. And he used to go on morning walks with uh, Dr. Patel. Some of you may have heard these conversations with Dr. Patel. They're very intense. Some, devotees, some of the devotees became angry because he was so kind of forceful with Prabhupada. And Prabhupada became very forceful with him also. At one point, Prabhupada said, no more talking, we'll just read the Krishna book while we walk. Because the discussions with Dr. Patel became so contentious that he wanted to stop them, actually, at one point. Although they... Re they remained very close. But at one point, when Prabhupada was desiring to build the Juhu property, he said, so now I'll need to collect uh, the money to build this project. And Dr. Patel said, no, that won't be possible. Nobody in India will give. And Prabhupada said, no, they will give. And he said, no, nobody will give. You'll have to get from America. And, um, and Prabhupada said, the, he, he said, he found this very discouraging. His words are very, and he said, I hope I don't discourage you. And he said, yes, you're discouraging me. I'm feeling discouraged by what you're saying. And Giri Rajmara said that he was surprised because he thought, well, Prabhupada, he's on this platform. He never becomes discouraged. <laughs> he said, but there is Dr. Patel discouraging him. And then he gave the other side of it when they came in and gave Prabhupada a report about their book distribution, and Prabhupada said, oh, now I've become very encouraged. And again, Giri Rajmarj was saying, well, what's the point? I thought he was just on this platform, was always encouraged. But there's a way in which there's variety within spiritual emotions. It's not that there aren't uh, these kinds of different pol polarities in emotion, but they're connected to Krishna's service. And therefore, they're uh, spiritual and they're meaningful. And so, yes, and, uh, more pastimes, please. Oh, and we have some WhatsApps coming in. We can hear them. We can hear them dinging. Thank you for joining WhatsApp and communicating with us here at the class. Go right ahead. <clears throat> I like the pastime of. Uh uh, Sundra Khan, where uh, Hanumanji actually sets off to, and the, all the one uh, a section of the Varana, Vanaras goes to the south, 
and hanuman ji said soft to find uh, mother sita so that section is very inspiring because uh, it shows uh, hanuman ji's determination and uh, you know um, and the dedication uh, which he takes up the mission and and strives to be you know uh, completed for the sake of lord ram and uh, during that whole past time he faces many obstacles distractions and so on and so forth but he overcomes all of them just by focusing uh, by his own uh, nature which is uh, dedication to the service of lord ram do you ever face obstacles or distractions <laughs> all the time <laughs> so it gives you strength vito right behind you we'll take and then we're coming up up this way prabhu uh, particularly one distraction if we can call which he faced was i think when he was jumping over the ocean uh, a mountain came up and said please rest for some time and uh, then you can resume your journey but he was saying that i am in the service of the lord and no rest now it's only uh, after that i can think of that and the other thing was i was always thinking he is actually doing this uh, a whole thing for uh, serving the lord but yet these obstacles are coming how come these are coming but he never thought like that that these obstacles i am trying to do it for you ram and yet you are sending these obstacles right he was so focused on uh, serving the lord nice points i i i liked a parallel to hanuman's not stopping he's on a mission and so stay rest for a little while that seems reasonable right but no no rest when sanatan goswami escaped from the prison and he he had gone past the inn where he had left his servant ishana and now he was walking on his own and he met a relative of his who was very wealthy he was there counting gold or something and he said uh he gave him a blanket a really nice chadar like the one i got the other day and uh and and then he said you stay here and rest up get cleaned up and you can stay a few days and sanat go swami's retort always sticks with me he said i won't even stay for a few minutes i'm going to see shri chaitanya mahaprabhu and he just left so there was no and this can come along well wishers people can come say ah, don't you know don't try so hard take it easy whatever but uh he kept going thank you for the hari krishna thank you prabhu for a wonderful class um there are many pastimes that i like but especially the the meeting of bharat and ram so that is very very uh, special because it's like avalanche of emotions right there and how different acharyas even express that after a while different sages just told that you know we are not doing logic anymore the love of bharat is um, has to win and then how after a while they come to a conclusion um, bharat takes the padukas and puts it on the throne of ayodhya but he does his job well he goes to nandi gram and does the i mean we don't hear that ayodhya was attacked in those 14 years he does the expert administration and then it also shows the servitorship and humility of bharat that he said that i cannot take anything which ram is not taking i mean he is sleeping on a bed of hay and he's not he's wearing deer skin and he's walking barefoot he's eating just uh, you know like roots and fruits so i will do that also so he does that yet expertly did his service also so and at the same time so much emotions so that's very it is mind yeah that's very be. profound and well one, one may be given service that may even seem inappropriate but then one must take it anyway and to be close to the mood of the master by following the method the way that the master has is living the way that uh, one's 
ideal devotee is living, if one follows that, no matter where one is, to the best of one's ability, one feels that closeness. Nice. Uh, Shraddha, you have some, some devotees have checked in? Let's hear from the devotees on the internet. So this is Bhakta Mike. He says, uh, Mike Jennings. And he says that my favorite pastime is when Hanuman flies with the Himalayas in his hand. And, oops, there are more coming in. <laughs> um, Hanuman flies with the Himalayas in his hand. And then there is communication with animals, all the monkeys and the two vultures. It's Gandamandan, I think. <laughs> it, Bhakta Mike, it's... Yeah, that's a, one of my favorite pastimes too, but the mountain is not the Himalayas. It's, it's the Gandamandana mountain. That's the, the mountain he was sent to to find the herb. And he couldn't distinguish which one it was, so he's just like, I'll take the whole mountain, <laughs> whatever's necessary. Nice points, Bhakta Mike. And uh, Gaurav Varma Prabhu says, I like the pastime when Bharat comes to meet Sri Ram, Lakshman, Jan and Janaki, and how they had the loving, affectionate exchange for negotiating Ram's return to Ayodhya, and how he accepted his paduka for serving the kingdom. It is said that the Ayodhya Vasis were more happy in Bharat's rules than under Ram's rule. I don't know about that part. <laughs> um, then there were... Um, this is from the WhatsApp Shastra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <that is. laughs> so... Um, the WhatsApp piranha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there was a, a, <laughs> a what? Now this is WhatsApp I'm reading. Uh, earlier one was Google text. <laughs> this one is from Baroda, India. And it is Rajesh Jalpa Himanchu and Yashasvi. Hi, yeah. And they are actually referring to a part of your, uh, part from your earlier lecture. And they're saying, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj and all the devotees at ISV. Thank you for this wonderful class. I like the point, Arya Vachasa, that following the superiors. And I was thinking, how can we do that? And, con and connected to the powerful mantra you gave at Jagannath Puri, that is, trust the process. And that's how we can follow the superiors and the Guru. Trust, trust, trust the, process. the process. Nice points. <laughs> Just once again. Now, this is from Switzerland. Switzerland? <laughs> Let's hear it for the Swiss devotees. Hari Ram! Jess Yaram. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Greetings from Switzerland. Atma Tattva Das Prabhu gave lecture once about Hanuman's adventures in Mahipur when Ram and Lakshman were kidnapped. Can you add some Hanuman lecture or expand on it? Thank you. And this is Chris Prabhu from um, Switzerland. And uh, I don't have a name yet, um, but Hare Krishna, Radhe Radhe, Jai Jai. I'm enjoying the lecture. Unfortunately, I have one question. <laughs> That's not unfortunate. Can you please say more about Mother Sita when Agni Devi you know, switched her for the... Um, please clear my doubts. You can read that, about that in the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. It's in the Majalila. And if you don't have a set, <laughs> we do ship. It's only $100. That pastime is there. It's, it's that when, when Sita was apprehended by Ravan, she was never touched by him. This the external energy manifested and an external form of Sita was manifest. The internal Sita was kept safely away because somebody with ill motives can't touch the internal energy. It's not that the internal energy can ever be disturbed, actually. And then when Ram returned victoriously to Ayodhya and he tested Sita by having her enter into fire, the exchange was made back again because Agni then reproduced the internal energy, Sita. And uh, that 
specific pastime is mentioned in the in the Tri Taitanya Charitamrita with reference to the Kurma Purana. You can look it up. One more. This is um, Sarika Mataji. She says, Hare Krishna, it's very nice to hear that emotions are also part of spiritual world. Emotions plus service equal to bhakti is the learning of the day. I always have what I need to hear from your class. Thank you for the wonderful class. Jai Sri Ram. I'm your expert miner if you can get something valuable out of my class. <laughs> okay. Thank you, everyone who checked in from the internet on texting and also WhatsApp. Um, most of whatever I wanted to say, oh, I think everything is taken, but I'm <laughs> It's impossible. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, and also, it's ever fresh, so you can yeah, always say it but again. But that Gandhi that mountain, like, you know, the other day also you said, whatever it takes, so that always rem reminds me of that. But I was also remembering uh, how Sri Ram gives shelter to Vibhishan. Like, everyone is doubtful, but then uh, Hanuman, because he's a devotee, he, because of his mercy, uh, Sri Ram uh, gives uh, shelter to Vibhishan. So that's one. And one more thing I always remember is um, when um, Hanumanji enters Lanka, he first uh, gets to see the uh, palace of Ravana, which is very opulent, his queens. And I don't know, maybe for a, for a minute his mind is away, and then he comes back, he remembers his goal. So how he's like getting away from the distractions and remembering his goal to save mothers. Your saver will save you. <laughs> yes, nice. I was just thinking in the same lines of Hanuman because uh, he embodies the three um, mantras that we learned last week of service for service. Whatever it takes, service for service and servant of the servant at every step of his service. And still it was not easy for him that he could complete the service and he was tested at every, every step of his um, attempt. And then when he was about to give up, finally, he was sitting on the same tree where Sita was sitting down. But still he was finally thinking about suicide and how the entire dynasty will be killed because of him, so better not live. And then right at that moment he takes shelter of Sita and then, um, and then he accomplishes the mission. So even in our attempts to do service, we, we don't know like when we will hit the, hit the goal. But we should always be confident that uh, somehow Krishna will uh, make that happen and it could be any time, sooner or later. So that, um, that Hanuman embodies through his, through his actions. So that gives a tremendous hope in our Krishna consciousness too. Thank you. Just want to mention also that I was thinking about how it is how it would be to organize a monkey army. <laughs> because you know, I've met a lot of monkeys in my life in walking around Govardhan Hill. At least I've observed them. <clears throat> and it's, you know, it's one of the hardest things to do is to work together. And then when you have monkeys, of course they're exalted souls, they're vonerous. <laughs> but still, in any organization, you know, working, as we talked before, you have this overarching goal that this is what we're going to do. This is what we're trying to do. And one has to divest one's own sense that, you know, I have to shine in, the, in all this. And invest all that into, I want to accomplish the service for the pleasure of the Lord. If it transforms into that, then the team becomes successful. And I just think how much teamwork there was working together with... Um, Killing Bali, first of all, he had to make an alliance with, um, I'm sorry, what's his name? Sugreev. Sugreev. He had to make a, a, an alliance with Sugreev. And, and there's always some obstacle. I was thinking about the obstacle working with Sugreev. He said that he would keep this deal, that he, Ram would kill Bali, and then Sugreev would take his armies out and they would go and look for Sita. But they were partying afterwards. <laughs> and they didn't do their job. And this happens too. And you have an organization and then you think something's getting done and then all of a sudden you find out like nothing was done. 
And Ram became, Lakshman especially became angry, but, but, but Ram was very concerned as well. And they had to pull together. And there's a way in which when you're serving the Lord, it doesn't mean everything's going to go smoothly. And there, is, there are lots of ways in which we have to keep reassessing what is our motive for doing this. And we see this in the pastime, how the Lakshman and Ram had to go and remind Sugriv that, you know, come on, let's, let's get into this now. And we have to remind ourselves constantly how we're working together, why we're working together to do what we're doing so that we can go on pleasing the Supreme Personality of God. It takes a lot of cooperation. Rajesh. Uh, Prabhuji, I just want to move to another one. Uh, the past time, specifically when uh, Lord Rama was going to, uh, you know, for the 14 years, uh, at that juncture itself, in, within the family, I know, uh, we all know that uh, something, uh, their parents, you know, he has to commit that thing. But the fam within that family, within the brothers and the mother Sita, the communication, that's very touching to me because that was Rama's word to go to, you know, 14 years present, not for Lakshman, not for Sita. Uh, I mean, in any particular scenario, if we correlate it, you know what, you did it, you take care, you know. And then you see uh, Lakshman, how adamant he was that I have to be there. And Sita, who was kind of born in a, in a royal family, how she as a, you know, wife role, was determined. It's actually more you read about that part, it tells the level of, you know, the emotions, the commitment to each other's, to the woe which they take it, it has a, such a high profound meaning. So, I just want to share. I'd like to just add to what Rajas Prabhu told, I had the same points, uh, about de uh, dedication of Lakshman especially, like he was not sentenced to go to forest, but he did. And he had to go through many difficult times in the forest also. He was misunderstood. Uh, Lord Ram told him to stay back, protect Sita. And Sita, um, out of her love for Lord Ram, uh, spoke very harsh word to Lakshman. So his character was misunderstood there. And then later on, Lord Ram met him. He told like, uh, Lord Ram, tell, I told you to be there and you are here. So his uh, competence also you know, in caution. And Lakshman had to do much more difficult services like testing Sita in um, after after the war, and also bringing Sita to Valmiki. So these are like uh, doing difficult services. So I just wanted to add the Lakshman's wife's sacrifice. I think it's utmost which uh, she, she was left alone at home, uh, and in order to serve him. That, that sort of commitment of letting husband go for 14 years outside, I think that sacrifice is something which is, uh, you can't read anywhere else. Yeah, one devotee the other day was talking about spiritual life and he said, well, after all, spiritual life means one sacrifice after another. <laughs> really what it means because you ultimately have to die to live. I, it, you reminded me when you went into the pastime of Sita being stolen away and Lakshman and Ramachandra having a discussion about it afterwards. And I, I remember Jatayu, one of the great heroes of the, the Ramayan and one of the great lessons also, that he wasn't strong enough to beat Ravana, but because the opportunity to fight and not just opportunity, but the obligation was there. He, he stepped up and he did, and he didn't say, well, I can't win this anyway, so why fight? But he fought to the death. And I'm always impressed with Jatayu's spirit, that he did everything he could. And actually, because of that, there were left behind some clues about which way Sita went. What time are you doing the offering? 10.15 is the offering? Okay, I'm glad that someone told me what's going on. <laughs> okay, so we have a, a Bali and then we have a text and then we're going to do the offering. So, yeah, I have also two realizations from uh, the Ramayana reading. Uh, one is during the, after the winning the battle and killing Ravana, everybody was happy and uh, Ram ordered uh, Bibhisan to bring Sita. So she was brought in a palanquin 
And at the same time, all the monkeys are very thrilled and excited that the mission is accomplished now. But they saw the Ram's behavior towards Sita that oh, doesn't want to see, he wants to, he has a doubt, transcendental doubt and all. But in the heart, all the monkeys are very angry towards Ram. But they, but they are now, what the crazy, we did it and there is, we are becoming like silly, you know, for no reason. But nobody is expressing their thoughts and everybody is kind of obliging, but they are getting irritated with Ram's attitude towards Sita. And, but Ram is very firm and convinced and that's why it, uh, Prabhupada mentioned Vaishnava Mati means nobody can understand even the great activities. So even nobody can understand the great uh, activities of Lord Ram, which is he himself knows, not even Lakshmana can also know. That's one great realization. Another one is when Rama was uh, coming back uh, to Ajodhya, and I was thinking that Ram came back to the Ajodhya with the Pushpak Viman, but he came to uh, Nandigram, near Nandigram, the ashram of uh, Bharadwaj ashram. And then he sent the messengers to Hanuman to be a disguise form to go to Bharat to check his uh, real attitude. Whether still he wants to be the king, then I can give it back to him. He can rule. I don't have any concern if he wants. But he wants to check, you know, the mentality of Bharat that whether, what is the intention right now whether it is fake. So, it is also good example. So, Prabhupada one day mentioned about check the mentality of a sannyasi, whether they have a desire to enjoy or really they are real sannyasi. So, it is exactly to checking even his own brother and God himself to Bharat that whether he has the real mentality of becoming a king or to serve me. But Hanuman could not uh, resist himself to declare that, uh, you know, Bharat is the really a pure devotion towards Lord Ram. Mm. And finally, one thing is, is uh, you know, the superstition about the one uh, people complain that there is superstition on Indians, the Hindus, and the people believe without any Vedic reference. But here I can conclude that from first, uh, first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam and also in Ramayana, when Ravan was coming in the Yuddha Khan section, that the vulture you know, perched and he passed stool on his uh, chariot and then his left limb, left eyes twitched and many things. This gives a symbolic representation of that inauspicious moments are coming, are waiting for us from the Vedic reference. That's all. Hare Krishna. Thank you. There was a test also that Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Pathamai gave to a disciple when some of the devotees were complaining that such and such was doing lots of service, but actually he was doing it for his own aggrandizement, and he was building up his own kind of following in that area. So Srila Bhaktisiddhanta called the, the disciple, and he said, so I'm sending you somewhere else. And he said, okay. And he said, all right, you can stay. <laughs> when he saw his reaction, when he had relocated him, he didn't ask, he just said, yes, sir, I'll do, you know. He wasn't concerned. He saw that he was detached and he tested his motive and how, how he was doing his service, which is important. Okay, last point coming from WhatsApp or the, or the text? Okay, WhatsApp. from I'm the happy. WhatsApp Purana, Purana. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there are quite a few more, but I'm just picking up the one that came in. Yeah, we want to thank sequence. everyone who's joined us on the internet today and thanks for texting in. We'll catch up to these on the next segment. They won't go in vain. So this is, um, this is from Aditi Sharma um, from India. She's the niece of Rajesh Sharma Prabhu. And um, <laughs> uh, she's a Hanuman Bhakta. Uh, <laughs> Hare Krishna Guruji, my humble obeisances unto you. Thank you for such a wonderful lecture. Hanumanji's dedication and love for his master is the best inspiration. I like when after Ramji's return to Ayodhya, as a token of respect, Sita Devi presents a necklace to Hanumanji. When Hanumanji breaks it to make sure that he can find Ramji in every pearl, however does not see him. Everyone in the audience makes fun of his devotion, but then he tears his heart apart, and there resides Lord Ram and Sita Devi. That's what I really like. Jai Shri Ram. Hare Krishna. Beautiful. Thank you very much, everyone who uh, participated today. And now... Pardon me? You want to share? 
Sharing means caring. Hare Krishna, bro. When Hanuman came back from the uh, Lanka and told Lord Ramchandra that I found Sita, Mother Sita, then Lord Ram says, uh, I don't have anything, I just embraces you. And uh, that picture is there in the Bhakti Vikas Maharaj Rama and Book Prabhu. Then when, when I see that picture, I can see how unalloyed devotional service Hanuman is having on Lord Ram. And Lord Ram also reciprocated whenever uh, Hanuman did that devotional service. Thank mm. you. Prabhu. Thank you very much. Now we have something very practical, which is an offering we're going to make to Zimai Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada and to Sita Ram Lakshman Hanuman on this Ram Naomi Day, which is the results of the devotees' book distribution over the last couple of weeks for the festival which is called the Monthly Sanctum Festival Service in the Mood of Hanuman. So we're going to put away all the asans, already started, and we're going to stand before Prabhupada's Vyasasan and Sri Krishna Purushottam, our co sankirtan leader, is going to read an offering which will include the scores from the book distribution over the last uh, couple of weeks. Thank you very much. <laughs> 